Okay, we're now in the second video in our series on the introduction to using the Bruker Dimension Icon AFM. In this one, we'll show how to navigate the sample over until it's under the scanner and then drive the scanner until it's one millimeter above the sample. And then we'll go over the parameters that are involved with AFM scanning. And then in the following video, we'll actually engage the sample and do some scanning. Okay, so first we're gonna click Navigate that will change the objective lens focus so that it's focused on a plane that's one millimeter below the cantilever. And now it's our job to get the scanner one millimeter above your sample. And that will happen when your sample is in focus. So to do that, we're not gonna go in order here. We're actually gonna start down here by driving the X and Y stage. If we look at this picture here, this is what our system looks like. We have our stage axes labeled. So first we're gonna drive the stage in the positive Y direction until our sample, which is somewhere around here, is underneath the scanner. Okay, so we'll start driving forward. And we'll be able to see in the live video as the sample gets closer to the scanner. It's going to be a few millimeters away. And when we get our sample under it, hopefully we can see that there is a little light that shines down and it shows us where the scanner is positioned over the sample. We have a little trackball here where I can position and try to get the light to shine down on a corner of the sample, which is my preferred way of doing it. It's a safe way of locating your sample. So once we have the light on the corner, then we can come back into the software, zoom out, maybe turn down our illumination, and now we will drive the scan head down. So it's okay to go at the fastest speed as long as you're watching visually until you see that the probe is about one millimeter from the sample. And then if we look here, we can see the corner. So that's the purpose of driving to the corner. And once we see it, we can start lowering just based on visual inspection here. We don't have to keep looking over at the actual sample. I'll turn down the illumination, double click to move it, and then we'll finalize the focus. So once we have our chip in focus, I'm going to drive to the middle of the chip where we have the actual sample that we're interested in scanning. So to show what we're gonna look at today, I'll go back to our wiki page and we're gonna use this surface topography reference, VGRP-15M. And if I double click on our picture here, then we'll see that it's actually this 180 nanometer step height. These are six by six micron squares etched into silicon dioxide, and they're set on a 10 micron pitch in both the X and the Y. So if we digitally zoom in, we'll be able to see these squares, and now we can lower the scan speed as we move the scan head up and down. And once it's in focus, again, that means that our scanner is one millimeter above the sample surface. So once you have that, you can double click maybe on one of these squares, and that really ends our navigation. So it's just a matter of getting the sample underneath the scanner and then lowering the scanner until our image is in focus. Okay, and having done that, we can now go over to check parameters. And the first thing I'll point out is that there are two ways of viewing the parameters. There's what's called simple mode, which is this green icon, and there we see only a handful of parameters. And there's called expanded mode, this red icon, and what I recommend, which is where you can see all of the parameters. At this point, I'll also take you over to the long version SOP that we have. And here is where I've collected definitions for all of the parameters involved on this system. So here are the basic ones up top, and I've highlighted in yellow the ones that I feel are most important, although certainly you can read up on all of the parameters. Uh, we can go down and see there's special ones for scan assist. There are special ones if you're using tapping mode, and others if you're using peak force tapping control, and on and on. Okay, so we can go back into our user interface and we'll go through the most important ones. So we can start with scan size. Uh, one micron, that just means we have a one micron field of view in the X. Aspect ratio of one would mean that we would also have one micron in the Y. 
if we were to change this to 2, then we'd still have 1 micron x, and we'd have a half micron y. So the aspect ratio is the ratio of x to y. And note that any parameter that gets changed from the defaults that loaded with the experiment will show up as green. So it's not a problem, it just means that it's been changed. So I'll put that back to 1. The x and y offset are just a way for us to move the scanner once it's landed on the sample. So if we landed here, we would be able to, say, move the scanner over in the x direction by a specified amount. We have 90 total microns in x and y that we can move the scanner with the piezo control. So when we land, we can technically move plus or minus 45 microns in any direction. The scan angle is set to zero degrees by default. If we look at this picture of our system, I mentioned that our stage axes are set up where this is positive y, this is positive x. So if our scan angle is zero, then our scan axes will be the same, positive y and positive x this way. Though we can rotate those scan axes to any degree, whether it's 45 degrees or 90 or 180 or any arbitrary angle in between. The scan rate is the number of lines scanned per second. So right now at one hertz, we're gonna scan one line per second. And each scan line includes both the forward direction and the reverse direction, or as we call it on the software, the trace and the retrace. So right now, if we have a one micron field of view, we go one micron in the trace plus one micron in the retrace uh, once every second. So we travel two microns every one second, or in other words, we go two microns per second. So the tip velocity is just calculated from the scan rate and the scan size. I actually think this is the most important to keep track of uh, rather than the scan rate because it's controlling the physical velocity of your tip, and that will really control how well you're able to scan up, over, and down features. So as you change the scan size, the scan rate will stay the same by default. So what I would do is, if I'm changing the scan size, I would also change the scan rate to try to keep a constant tip velocity that I had determined is best for measuring the uh, topography of my features. Samples per line, that just means the number of X pixels across your field of view. So right now at 256 pixels and one micron, each pixel is about four nanometers. You don't really want each pixel to be much less than the practical resolution that you can achieve on this microscope. So really about a two nanometer pixel size is about the smallest that I would try to go to. Anything smaller than that and you're not really getting the resolution that you're asking for. Uh, and you really want to try to scale it to about the radius of curvature of your tip size. Lines is just the number of Y pixels in your field of view, and right now with 256 by 256, we have square pixels. And that might be a good thing to do in most cases, although there will certainly be times where you might want to decrease the number of lines and make your pixels, say, rectangular instead. So this would allow us to scan in better resolution along the X while we quickly hop along to different lines along the Y. So this we'll see as a way to quickly scan on the Y dimension to get a quick view of your sample while still maintaining good X resolution. It's also a good way you can always add in a lot more pixels and get really good resolution. Say you're going over a waveguide you want to get great resolution for every line you scan, but you don't need to scan every pixel along the Y. You just want to jump from line to line to line. Okay, so we'll put those back to where they were. And the slow scan axis just means are we enabling a 2D scan. So the Y axis is the slow scan axis. If it's enabled, you'll get a 2D image. If it's disabled, then you'll scan the same line over and over and over, and what gets displayed along the y-axis will be the time dimension. We'll skip these two and move on to feedback. So the feedback gain is a value that we'll ask the software to automate during our scans, and I'll show you that when we're scanning in the next video. Uh, peak force set point is the amount of force that we're trying to achieve with each tap when using peak force tapping mode. And again, this is something that we can allow the software to automate. So usually I'll leave this on at the beginning, and then once it lands, we'll let it find a happy 
peak force set point, and then once it's there, we'll typically lock it to off so that we keep the same force throughout the rest of the scan. So we'll turn that back to on for now. Uh, we'll skip these two, and then we have auto scan rate, so we can leave that on if it senses that the tip velocity is too fast for the size of the features that are being scanned. It will lower the scan rate and therefore decrease the tip velocity. Auto Z limit, we turn that on if we want the software to automatically adjust the Z range that's possible. This is how we can adjust the uh, Z resolution that is achievable. To know the Z resolution, we take the Z range and we divide it by 2 to the 16th power for our 16-bit DAC, and we're able to basically improve the Z resolution by an order of magnitude by taking it from, say, 12 down to about 1 or 2 microns if we're only scanning samples that have very shallow features. All right, so we'll leave those all on for now. Peak force amplitude, this is something that you can use in concert with peak force set point. So it's the only other parameter that really controls uh, how much force effectively is, is imparted by the tip on the sample. So this is the force per tap. The peak force amplitude basically determines how long the tip stays in contact with the sample. So if we have a larger amplitude, then it's going to spend less time down in contact with the sample and that typically means that we'll wear the tip out less quickly. If we have a smaller amplitude, it's more time spent down there. That might give you better tracking, but at the expense of wearing out the tip. If you ever see that your force curve has a big sinusoid superimposed on it, you would want to decrease your peak force amplitude to get rid of that sinusoid. Peak force frequency is gonna be two kilohertz for most peak force tapping experiments, although now there are options to do that at lower frequency. Lift height is only if you're using a lift mode type of scan, like magnetic force or electrostatic force microscopy. And spring constant is just loaded in when we said we're using a scan assist probe from a lookup table. Again, Z range is the total range that our piezo can travel. And right now we're allowing it to access the full 12 microns of that piezo. And then down here are other things we can do. We can bias the tip, we can bias the stage, uh, we're not going to do any of that in these videos. These are often used for other types of applications. Okay, and with that, we have covered all the main parameters and check parameters. And in the next video, we will engage the sample and start scanning. See you then.